I am VR Sashi Rao, Associate Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering. Today, I am going to discuss about the architecture and signal description of 8086 microprocessor. The first module course structure is like this. Register organization of 8086, architecture, signal description of 8086, physical memory organization, general bus operation, IO addressing capability, special purpose activities, minimum mode, maximum mode, and machine language instruction formats, addressing modes and instruction sets, and assembler directors and operators. So in this, I am going to discuss about the signal description of 8086. So this is the pin diagram of 8086 microprocessor. This contains 40 pins and it is available in dual inline package. This uh, 8086 microprocessor, it works in two modes, minimum mode and maximum mode. It can work as like a simple microprocessor or it can work along with other co-processors. The first pins are AD0 to AD15. So this AD0 to AD15, this is multiplexed address data bus. So where are these pins? So you can see here this is AD14 and this is AD0 and this is AD14. What is AD? It stands for address and data. So as we know, you cannot have address and data at the same point, but they are available at different points time. That is why this is called time multiplexed address data bus. So if you see the timing of uh, 8086 microprocessor, each machine cycle consists of four clock pulses. Okay, so these four clock pulses we call them as T1, T2, T3, T4. So this is uh, T1, so this is uh, T1, and this is uh, <coughs> T2, and this is T3. And this is T4 like that. So during T1, address is available on this AD0 to AD15 line. So during T1 part of the time diagram, address is available on this AD0 to AD15 lines. And during T2, T3, T4, the same bus is used for transfer of data and uh, these uh, AD0 to AD15 this bus is floated during interrupt acknowledgement and during bus acknowledgement cycles that means during DMA and during interrupt acknowledgement uh, times this AD0 to AD15 lines are tri-stated or they are floated. So that's all about this 18 or 2015. That means we have discussed about 16 lines. So this is the 18 or 2 AD 15 lines. So as I said, when address is available on this 18 or 2 AD 15 lines, this ALE signal it goes high. It indicates that. The information which is present on this AD0 to AD15 bus is address. During other parts of time, this ALE signal is disabled. Okay. Next, uh, these um, we have the ground pins at 20 and 21, and the power supply is given at VCC. The power supply is given at VCC. The clock which is used for 8086, it is, it is in the range of 5 to 10 megahertz. So we basically use 5 megahertz or 8 megahertz or 10 megahertz. 
and this is asymmetric clock with a 33% duty cycle. That means the on period is not equal to the off period. So it is something it is something like this. The on period is less and the off period is more. So this is asymmetric clock with 33% duty cycle. That means during for 33% of uh, the time, the clock pulse is on. For the remaining 67%, uh, the clock pulse is in off state. And VCC is given at pin number 14. And this 8086 works with a single power supply. And the power supply which is required is plus 5 volts. As you can see here. And the power supply tolerance is plus or minus 10%. Next we have the pins reset and uh, ready. So what is reset? When you give reset, the processor terminates its current activity and it starts fetching instructions from the predefined memory location. So when you press reset, the registers are initialized to the default values and the processor starts fetching instructions from the memory location FFF0H. You know the physical address is computed in 8086 by Taking the base address from the segment registers, there are four segment registers which we have discussed in earlier series of lectures. We have the code segment, data segment, stack segment and uh, extra segment. So these, uh, the base address is taken from these uh, segment registers and offset is address is taken from the point registers like uh, SP, BP, BX, SI or DI. And for this case, when you press reset, the core segment register is initialized with FF, FF. And the IP register, which is a corresponding pointer for the core segment register, it is initialized with 0000. So the effective address is calculated by this way. One zero is added to the base address, so 0H is added to the base address and to that the offset address from IP is added. The offset address here is 0000. So the effective address is F, 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 0H. So the processor starts executing instructions which are present from this memory location. And ready. See, the ready signal is used for data transfer from the devices which are slow. So, when the when the, some devices are slow, when uh, after the data transfer and when they are ready to when they are when they are ready to take the data for the next byte, they give the signal ready. So, after the data transfer is completed, they initiate the ready signal. Then the CPU gives the next byte to the external slow devices. So ready signal, it, is a, it facilitates handshaking and it, it facilitates transfer of data from the faster CPU to the slow I.O. devices. So ready signal is given by the slow I.O. devices uh, to the CPU that they are ready for next byte transfer. So then the processor, when it gets the ready signal from the slow I.O. devices, it sends the next byte to the I.O. devices. So that is all about the ready signal. And uh, we have this NMI signal, which is a non-maskable interrupt. So non-maskable interrupt, it is an edge triggered interrupt and it cannot be masked. 
So there are two types of interrupts, level triggered and edge triggered. Level triggered and edge triggered. If you see, there are two interrupts in 8086, NMI and INTR. INTR is level triggered and NMI is edge triggered. So, what is the difference between level triggered and edge triggered? See, level triggered signal is when it changes from 0 to 1. So, or 1 to 0. So, when for a predefined value of 0 or 1, then the signal is acknowledged by the microprocessor. Edge trigger is during transition, the signal is acknowledged. That means during this portion, the signal is acknowledged. So, NMI is edge triggered interrupt and it cannot be masked. You cannot mask the NMI signal. That is why this is called non maskable interrupt. Okay. And INTR is interrupt request and this is level triggered. And what is the purpose of interrupt? Whenever any external device wants the service of the microprocessor, they send a signal on these lines, INTR or NMI. Then the processor executes the current instruction and then it provides service to the external device and this uh, service is provided by the microprocessor only if the interrupt flag is set. See there is a flag register in 8086. The flag register contains 9 flags and uh, 6 are conditional flags and 3 are control flags and in the control flags we have the interrupt flag track flag and the direction flag and if that interrupt flag is set then only whatever requests are coming on INTR are acknowledged by right? the micro processor. So this is uh, the INTA interrupt acknowledge signal. See basically the 8086 is a 40 pin IC and I, the, it works in two modes, minimum mode and maximum mode. The, all the signals of 8086 uh, can be classified under three categories. So what are the three categories? Signals which are common to minimum mode and maximum mode and signals which are exclusive to minimum mode and signals which are exclusive to maximum mode. Now, this uh, what you see here, the hold HLDA, WR bar, M by IO bar, DDA, R, R bar, and DN bar, ALE, and INTA, all these things, they, they are active only in minimum mode. And the signals RQ bar by GT0 bar, RQ bar by GT1 bar, log bar, S2 bar, S1 bar, S0 bar, QS0 and QS1, these belong to the maximum mode. And how do you decide whether the 8086 is in minimum mode or maximum mode? That is decided by what input you give it to this pin number 33. You see here, this is MN by MX bar. If 33 is connected to VCC, that means the microprocessor is in standalone mode or minimum mode. If 33 is connected to ground, then the microprocessor operates in multiprocessor mode. That means we can connect other core processors also. Now let us see the signals which are uh, specific to the minimum mode. So you see here hold and hold acknowledge. So these signals are used for the DMA operations, direct memory access operations. So see normally whenever data transfer has to take place between the memory and IO device, what happens is that first the data is taken, first the data is 
transfer to the CPU from the IO device, then CPU gives the data to the memory. So, so IO device to the CPU and from CPU to the memory. So, this is how the data flows. This is okay if uh, small amount of data transfer is involved. If you have to transfer one byte or two bytes, then okay, you can transfer the data from IO device to the CPU, then from CPU to the external memory. But if large bulk data is to be transferred between the IO device and memory, then this is not this this takes a lot of time. So instead of uh, involving CPU, DMA direct memory access method is used using which the data can directly go from IO device to the memory and vice. So, this saves a lot of time. So, when the IO device wants to use the system bus for DMA transfer, it sends hold request to the microprocessor. Then, the microprocessor gives hold acknowledgement. Then, the system bus is tri stated and the control system bus control is given to the external IO device. And the external IO device in memory they come in direct contact and the data flow takes place, the bulk data flow it takes place and after data transfer is completed, the whole request is removed, then the microprocessor automatically deactivates the whole acknowledgement signal and it, it again gain, gains control over the system bus. So hold and hold acknowledgement they are used for the DMA operations. Okay. Now these A16, A17, A18, A19, these are the common signals and uh, these are the, the high order address bus and these are also time multiplex that means during T1 address is available on these lines and during T2, T3, T4 these lines are used for status information. Okay. So, we have total 20 address lines. So, when we have total 20 address lines, how much memory you can have? You can have a maximum of 1 megabyte. See, 20 address lines means 2 power 20. So, 2 power 20 is nothing but 2 power 10 into 2 power 10. So, this is 1k into 1k. So, it is total is 1 mega. So, you can connect 1 megabyte of external memory. So this A6, so you have the address lines AD02, AD15, they are 16 and then followed by A16, A17, A18 and A19. So total you have 20 address lines and these uh, first AD02, AD15 they are used for address and data bus uh, but A16 to A19 they are multiplexed with status information. So what is status information? The status information is like this. S4, S3, when it is 0, 0, they indi it indicates that they are using alternate data segments that means alternate data that means they are using ds or es segments there are four segment registers so if it is zero zero it indicates that the processor is using alternate data segments ds and es and if it is zero one it indicates that stack segment is currently being used by the microprocessor and if it is one zero Code segment is used by the microprocessor, and if it is one one data segment is used by the microprocessor. So they indicate which segment is being used by the microprocessor. Okay, and S five, which is used in conjunction with the, in conjunction with A eighteen. So this S five it indicates the status of interrupt flag. Whether interrupt flag is uh, enabled or disabled, 
the status of internet flag is displayed on this line A18 by S5. So that is pin number 36. And currently S7 is not S6 is not used. So this S6, A19 by S6, currently that is not being used. So as I have mentioned right just now that S6 is always at loss of 0 and S5 indicates the condition of interrupt flag bits and S3, S4 they indicate which segment is accessed during the current bus cycle whether code segment or data segment or stack segment or extra segment which segment is being accessed during the current bus cycle that is indicated on this S3, S4 lines just I have explained. And MN by MX bar, I have explained to you that if uh, uh, it is tied to plus 5 volts, it is in minimum mode, and if it is tied to 0 volts, it is in maximum mode. So, these are all the minimum mode pins of, out of which we have discussed about the hold and hold acknowledgement. Of course, we have not discussed. Uh, we have not discussed the WR bar and M by IO bar, DT by R bar and these things. And W write bar signal it is used to write data to the memory. When the microprocessor is writing data to the external memory, then write bar signal is used. So it is, it is made zero. And M by IO bar, M by IO bar signal is used for memory or IO device interfacing. Yeah. And this M by IO bar signal, it is active from the T4 of previous cycle to the T4 of current cycle. And this uh, M by IO bar signal, it is floated during bus acknowledgement cycle. And uh, as far as uh, interfacing of external memory is concerned, as I explained just now, we can interface 1 megabyte of memory, but we can connect only 64k IO devices. For IO device interfacing, we, we use only AD0 to AD15 lines. So, as there are uh, 16 lines, we can connect with the 16 lines. How many devices we can connect? 2 power 2 power 16. 2 power 16 is how much? 2 power 6 into 2 power 10. 2 power 6 is 64 and 2 power 10 is 1K, so you can connect only 64K IO devices. And M in, so M by IO bar it indicates whether the data transfer is to the memory or IO device. If M by IO bar is equal to 1, that means the data transfer or the transaction between the CPU and other external devices memory. If M by IO bar is 0, that means the CPU is making transactions with IO devices. If M by IO bar is equal to 1, it means that the CPU is making transactions with external memory. And DT by R bar. So, this DT by R bar, it indicates the direction of data flow in the trans receivers. See, we have the time allocated status data bus 1802 to 8015. When the CPU is sending data to the memory, the data flow is like this. When the CPU is reading data from memory, the data flow is like this. So, CPU is receiving the data, but, but when the CPU is giving the data, CPU acts like a transmitter. When CPU is getting data, it acts like a receiver. So, if DT by R bar is equal to 1, that means CPU is transmitting data, it is writing data to the memory. If DT by R bar is equal to 0, it means that the CPU is receiving data from the memory. So that is DT by R bar is equal to 0. And DEN, DEN it indicates the availability of valid data on the data bus. That is the purpose of DEN. DEN it indicates, DEN is nothing but data availability. So and this uh, DN signal is active from T2 
to the T4. The middle of T2 to the middle of T4, this DN signal is active. And this is active low signal. And of course, we have discussed about uh, ALE and INTA, which are other minimum mode signals. And BHE bar by S7. So, this BHE bar by S7, it indicates uh, if it is 0, it indicates that there is a data transfer on the high order data bus. So, if BHE bar is equal to 0, it indicates that the data transfer is taking place on the high order data bus. So, what is the data bus? We have AD02. AD 15. So that means what is the high, what is the low order data bus AD 0 to AD 7. What is the high order data bus AD 8 to AD 15. So if BHE bar is equal to 0, it indicates that the data transfer is taking place on D8 to D15. And what signal is used to indicate the transfer of data on the low order data bus? That is A0. So, if A0 is equal to 0, it indicates that the data transfer is taking place on the low order data bus. So, this is indicated like this, BHE bar and A0, if both are 0, 0, that means the data transfer is taking place on high order data bus as well as on the low order data bus. So, that is 8 bits and 8 bits. So, this indicates 16 bit data transfer. 16 bit data transfer and you know the 886 microprocessor it is 16 bit processor and if it is 0 1 it indicates that only byte transfer byte transfer on the high order bus what is the high order bus ad 8 to ad 15 and if it is 1, 0, it is byte transfer on AD0 to AD7. And 1, 1, it does not, it is not used, none, no transfer. So these are used uh, to derive chip select signals from the external memory chips. So, bus high enable, this enables most significant data bits DE15 to D8 during read or write operation and this signal uh, is used for S7 also but currently S7 is not used and this is always 1. Now, we will discuss about the maximum mode signals. So, first is the read signal and uh, read signal it is used to read the data from the external memory. Next we have the write signal. The write signal it is used to write data to the memory and So, these are the signals which are specific to the minimum, sorry, maximum mode. Okay. So, what are the status signals S2 bar, S1 bar, and S0 bar? So, these are used to to generate control signals in the maximum mode. So, they are given to a bus controller and the bus controller in turn it generates the control signals like this. So, this is uh, S2 bar, S1 bar and S0 bar. So, if all are 0, 0, that means it is, it indicates interrupt acknowledgement signal. And if it is 0, 0, 1, so that means read I go port. 
read i go what the next is 0 10 so this indicates right i o port if it is 0 11 it indicates halt state and if it is 100 that means it is code access and if it is 101 it indicates read memory and if it is 110 it indicates write memory and if it is 111 it indicates passive state so these are the various status signals which are available at the pin numbers 26 27 28 okay now let us see the log bar signal the log bar signal this is a log bar signal at pin number 29 see whenever you put log prefix to any instruction unless that instruction is execution is finished the microprocessor will not be disturbed so whenever the microprocessor is doing critical program inspection the log instruction is prefix prefixed and as long as that instruction is getting executed no other masters are allowed to gain access to the system bus so no other masters can request for the for dma operations so that is the purpose of lock signal and we have to and qs not and qs1 they indicate the q status so what is the q status you know there is a 6 byte uh, first in first out q which facilitates pipelining in 86 microprocessor and uh, you know the instruction execution takes place in three states fetch decode and execute so the instructions are fetched well in advance from the memory and they are stored in 6 byte fifo which is present in the microprocessor and this speeds up the execution of the program and these signals qs not and qs1 they indicate the q status of fifo in this way so there are two bits so you have four combinations so in four combinations first is the 00 qs not and qs1 if it is 00 it indicates that there is no operation if it is 01 it indicates that first byte of op code from the queue is being fetched first byte is being fetched from the fif form if it is 10 empty queue that means all the six bytes are processed by the micro processor and if it is 11 that means subsequent byte from the queue is being fetched subsequent byte is being fetched from the micro processor next we have the signal test so this test is very important signal and the micro processor when it is in wait state it comes out from the wait state only if the test signal is low so when the test signal becomes active the microprocessor comes up to wait state and it goes for the execution of next instruction that is the use of the next the test signal and rq bar by gt not and rq bar by gt1 they perform the same function hold and hold acknowledge but here this rq bar by gt not and rq bar by gt1 they are bidirectional Pins. So whenever external circuit is 
whenever any external device wants to use a system bus, they send a request on RQ bar and the microprocessor relinquishes the system bus to the external device by giving grant. So there are two things here, RQ bar by GT0 and RQ bar by GT1. If there is a simultaneous request from two bus masters, then RQ bar by GT0 is given high priority. So if two external devices, if two external processors wants to use a system bus and if they are sending requests concurrently on RQ bar by GT0 and RQ bar by GT1, then RQ bar by GT0 is given highest priority. So these are all the various signals of 886. So we have total three categories of signals, signals which are common to the minimum mode and maximum mode and signals which are exclusive to the minimum mode and signals which are exclusive to the maximum mode and it is decided by the signal at pin number 33 that is mn bar m by mx bar if mn by mx bar is tied to vcc then the processor operates in the single mode or the minimum mode if mn by mx bar is connected to ground then the processor operates in maximum mode so with this i concluded today's session on the signal description of 886 microprocessor thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates